Hey folks, Vic here for ThePracticalPrepper.com Welcome back to another video. We'll call this one uh, Hoop House 2 um, just because I have one called Hoop House 1. So in, in the beginning, these were kind of laid out. There wasn't really anything up. We now have Hoop House 1 Hoop House 2 are up. Like I previously talked about, I, I reduced the size to basically 16 by 16. Uh, one is to keep the county out of my yard forever. The other one is, I think it's just pretty efficient. So I can make two, I've got one more here with a few more parts. Uh, I can make a third and I plan to. So we'll end up with three of them that are 16, 16. We uh, planted out a lot of stuff and I'll bring the video over here in a minute and I'll kind of show you what we have. But uh, basically I, I got the shell built, the frame was up, concrete work's done, all the braces are in. I went with triple purlins up here, um, just gives us much more support and I went with hoops on four foot instead of six foot. Gives us more more strength. And then our winds up here, I think that's going to be important. Um, I haven't done the fronts or backs on them yet and um, I have to get the runner material in there to to put the plastic over them but uh, that's something for a little later my main concern was to get these guys in place because we had a lot of plants that were coming up and um, we actually had to, I actually had to build, throw this together yesterday. This is a 16 by 5 foot planter bed here in front, I'll show you. And I needed that for the overflow because we had another, I think another dozen uh, tomato plants and we had some more um, hearts of gold cantaloupe and uh, a couple racer pumpkins and a few other things that were the odds that didn't get planted in the other four beds. And we actually couldn't, we actually had about four plants which we put down on the toe swale and uh, racer pumpkin and some cucumber and we'll see how those go last year the, the uh, racer pumpkins down there did fine they produced several nice pumpkins so we'll see how that works again this year again all of it's experimental um, we have a lot of different plants that we put in the ground and some of them came from our permaculture group one of the gals had a big tub and of uh, tomatoes some brandy wines and, and a whole lot of other stuff peppers which I don't know which peppers they are. We'll see when they produce. They just said peppers. So we threw all of that in and it's a big variety and we're seeing what really takes and what hasn't taken. We know last year our cucumbers did really well, racer pumpkins did really well, and we we really got hurt because we had a real bad hailstorm and we planted in May. This is June. We waited till Memorial Day to plant. And uh, I know there will be no more I know there's no more frost. The frost actually stop in the end of May here. But I was concerned about getting that hailstorm because it did a lot of damage to everything last year. So we're hoping that doesn't happen this year. If it does, at least in the hoops, I can throw a quick cover and uh, with these clips, I can clip it on and at least keep uh, mitigate the damage to both of these guys. Over the summer, I'll work at getting these uh, framed in on the ends with uh, a door on this end and uh, both and then the other two ends will also have uh, vents high vents and low vents so I can open them and try to get a little convection flow in there we also have this material which I ordered and it, we have one large enough to go over the entire hoop and clip on so what we'll do this summer is we're gonna run it just like they are as I get the hardware in place to put to skin it and uh, July and August, we will go ahead and run it with just this material on the top. Which is what a lot of people do. They get the plastic off or they roll up the sides to um, get more draft through and, and get the heat away from them. So uh, we'll do that um, this year. And uh, I don't know if I'll get the third one built maybe next year before I actually get that one done. We are, there's just too much... Too much happening this year with uh, events, things that we're doing, and a uh, little vacation we're taking, and um, it's a lot of fall hunting to do. So we'll we'll see how all that works out. Um, I built planter boxes inside. I had a bunch of 12-inch lumber, two by four by 12, or two by 12, excuse me. So I had a bunch of that. So I reconfigured it, rebuilt it, made it into beds. So they're a foot deep. We brought in. Um, I got compost from. A place over uh, Donovan who makes their own compost 
and then I got triple mix and I basically 50 50 the mix to do the boxes and that's turned out to be a pretty darn good soil mixture it's light to where the plants can move around but it's solid enough to grow in so we'll see how it goes I also had um, 20 yards of wood chips and I had them brought in early this year <clears throat> the arborist that brings them to us gets really really busy and sometimes you're gonna wait two and three weeks to get them I know with the planter boxes I needed chips like as soon as that soil got in and those things got planted they needed to get chipped um, and it does real well so we've chipped kind of around the outside as well hopefully when it's real hot we can kind of spray this down with some water and maybe have a little bit a few degrees cooler in the air temp around them so um, anyway let me drop these I'll get the camera and uh, I'll show you kind of what we've what we've got in place um, and then I'll probably just uh, give you a brief tour of the two straw berries that we have and they're all planted out we're also doing Somewhere on the chicken coop, I'll give you a quick look. Over there, we've, we're experimenting this year. I'm, I'm, I'm running gourds. Gourds are a long season, but I'm gonna see how they do. I'm gonna basically let them trellis on the ground. I don't have anything built yet. Uh, if they grow, if they produce gourds, I may think about building something else that's more of a trellis system, which will be really cool. But I wanna see how they do. So far, they're doing phenomenal. They've <clears throat> they've hit the ground running they get a lot of sun and uh, they're taking off we're doing beans I'm sorry we're doing potatoes in bags we've got those run around there we're doing sunflowers at the same time so um, anyway let me uh, we get the camera off the tripod and I'll walk you through show you what we got in both of these guys and uh, then I'll show you the raised beds okay be right back this is uh, what we're calling hoop one you can see the beds that we built um, this of course you can probably guess this is the door end there's a little bit of room here on the sill pull this back between the sill lumber right here right there so this would be where we'd step through the door um, this particular box here is five feet wide so it worked out and I needed a trellis. So I had some extra T-posts <clears throat> and just some standard fence wire. So I, uh, I pretty much just threw these in, clipped off the fence wire and we'll use it as a trellis. So there's a lot of tomatoes and pumpkins. We got uh, bush beans, uh, zucchinis, watermelon, This one right here is a brandy wine. We've got several brandy wines right here. So we put these a little bit far apart. These two posts, if you're kind of like wondering what the heck are those, I'm gonna cut those down because I'm going to, um, those two are in concrete. I'm gonna make a couple little legs that sit on the ground and frame in a, a small potting bench right here. So if we're working, we can throw stuff up here. Yeah, I think it'll just be handy in the future. So hoop two's built just about the same nothing different and nothing really fancy about it the uh, material that you see up here we put that originally because we were having some pretty good wind and I wanted to give the plants a chance to uh, develop a little rootage and uh, get a little stronger before I pulled it down and uh, I think I'll probably pull that down here uh, uh, in a day or so <coughs> excuse me, in a day or so, and let them get uh, a little bit more sun, and I think they'll stand up to the wind a little bit better. It's definitely helped keeping really the stronger winds that we had a low pressure go through, and it's really kind of helped not damage those. So this is a little ground one. I had to throw it together real fast, and uh, it should work out fine. Again, no, nothing fancy. Two by four screws and all. I'll reinforce the metal corners and that one will be an open air. The other thing I can do is I can put some uh, put some EMT on the side and make some hoops so that this is a row cover we could do and uh, in the future. And uh, here's of course the longest straw bale we have and uh, I did the same thing I needed a needed some kind of trellis so I just throw that in. This is uh, this one does have wood in the bottom and uh, 
it's done real well. So we're already starting to get some cukes coming in. We've got snap bees and peens and uh, halona melons, all kinds of uh, cucumbers, and a lot of hearts of gold melon. Hearts of gold is a is a melon. I've still got my onions in here too. Hearts of gold is a melon <clears throat> from uh, Fallon, Nevada, and uh, very famous uh, in this area. Seeds very expensive if you get it. So what you do is you go to the Hearts of Gold Festival one year and uh, you buy melons to eat and uh, you tell them you want them whole. So you bring them home, save the seeds, and that's what we planted out this year. So this is kind of the rest of, rest of the raised bale, the long one. And we're just starting to get some things going here. This uh, area around, the four foot fence around here is absolutely rabbit proof. So we have no bunnies in here at all. <clears throat> and this is the, the other short barrel. This was the uh, short raised bed, excuse me. This was the original one we did. And you can see by the color it is, and it's kind of starting to fall apart. What I'll probably do is take some old pallets and I'll build a, a frame around this thing and then eventually we'll just start planting right in the, in the straw bales. This still has a lot of garlic. There's two different varieties of garlic and two different onions. There's white and red onions and I think I have Roja garlic and uh, I think the other one's an American garlic. The other thing we put in, this is walking onion. There's one here, there's one on the other end. It's uh, doing quite well. We just got that from a friend's garden and it's just taken right off. So, and then here is a, this is a false indigo. This is one that was dying on me and you can see I put it in a bucket and got it some good soil and it's taking off. This is one, didn't work so well, <clears throat> but that's a black locust. And that one, for some reason, just failed miserably and it's, it's definitely gone. So everything's an experiment. We're keeping the mint in here. Now the mint, you know, you all know it can be really evasive and all in all things are uh, quite well. The soil's still got, yeah, see it's still got some good, good moisture in it with the, if it wasn't for wood chips, we probably wouldn't, couldn't grow much of anything out here. It's just, just too tough. Anyway, that's it from, uh, for the current hoops and garden just to give you an update here.